No animal must ever live in a house or sleep in a bed or wear clothes or drink alcohol or smoke tobacco or touch money or engage in trade. And above all, no animal must ever tyrannize over his own kind. All animals are equal. Hello, hello, I'm Ernesto Rodgar. Welcome back to my channel. For this week, I want to talk about one of my most recent reads, Animal Farm. It was written by George Orwell and published in 1945. It's a short but powerful book that criticizes corrupt regimes and absolute power. As a historian, I really enjoyed the book because I know a thing or two about the Russian Revolution, so I understand the nods and references that Orwell does throughout the book. But what if you're not a historian and know nothing about Russia or revolutions? How can you enjoy the book? Well, you can always go into YouTube and find a friendly historian that would gladly explain it to you. First, let's take a quick view, a summary of the book, and then a deeper view of what everything means. In a simple view, the book tells the story of a farm in England where the animals have carried out a rebellion. They took out the human owner of the farm and established their own animal regime. The pigs rise to power, considered to be the smartest animals of the farm. But soon, tensions and rivalries began to appear between the two main pig leaders. As the story progresses, one pig becomes the one and only ruler of the farm. In a deeper and closer inspection, the story is a satire of the Russian Revolution and throws a powerful and not at all subtle critique to totalitarianism and cult of personality. It also gives us some excellent examples of how a regime can manipulate and reshape past events to create a version of history that best suits their interests. To make things easier, let's compare the historical events and the book. The main characters of the book are two pigs, Snowball and Napoleon. The pigs would represent the Soviet politicians and the rest of the animals, the horses, chickens, cows, the donkey, would represent the rest of the Russian and Soviet society and, and the workforce of that society. The Russian Revolution got its ideas from communism. This ideology, in the briefest way possible, believes that there should not be any private property and that society should not be based on a system of power, meaning employer-employee or owner-worker. In Animal Farm, the core belief of animalism is that all animals are equal and that they should not be slaves to the humans. All of this is based on what Major, one of, an, an old pig, tells the animals right in the first chapter. In 1917, Russian workers took down the monarchy and killed the Tsar, the Emperor of Russia, and the entire imperial family. No, Anastasia did not survive. In the book, the animals scare away the human owner, who later dies probably drunk. The leader of the Russian Revolution was Vladimir Lenin, who for some reason doesn't appear in the book. After Lenin died in 1924, the two new faces of the Soviet Union were Yosef Stalin and Leon Trotsky. Now, if you've only heard of one of them, that should be a clue. And if you haven't heard of either of them, then that's why I'm here. In Animal Farm, the equivalents of these two men would be the two pigs that I mentioned before, Napoleon and Snowball. One big difference between the two historical characters was that Stalin believed that the best way to secure the dream of communism and the dream of revolution was to concentrate on Russia and the other Soviet republics, build them hard, build them big, and then the revolution will come to the other countries. On the other hand, Trotsky believed that they had to spread the sentiment of communism and revolution to other countries 
using the communist parties in other countries to promote a revolution beyond the Soviet borders. And George Orwell takes this exact idea and puts it in the mouths of the characters of the pigs. Napoleon wants to concentrate on the farm and make the other animals work and build the farm big, while Snowball thinks that the best option for them is to send birds to the other farms to promote a revolution in the other farms. Tensions between Stalin and Trotsky grew, and in 1929 Trotsky was expelled from the Soviet Union, and he would later be killed in 1940 by a Stalin supporter. In Animal Farm, Napoleon takes a group of puppies and raises them to become his own personal guard of fierce dogs. And at one point, they chase out Snowball, who has to escape the farm, never to return. The pigs in Animal Farm at one point move into the human house, saying that they needed the space for the work that they did as leaders of the farm. Similarly, the Soviet leaders like Lenin and Stalin moved into the Kremlin, a fortress and palace from imperial time in Moscow, Russia. After taking down Trotsky and other opponents, Stalin began to delete them from the history books, changing the narration of the Russian Revolution and the early days of the Soviet Union. Parallel to this, under Napoleon's order, another pig, Squealer, tells the rest of the animals that Snowball was a criminal, that he had cooperated with the humans, and that he was a bad influence. And when the other animals try to remember whether that was true or not, Squealer quickly began telling them that no, that they were wrong and that he was stating the facts. And the animals believed him because they saw the pigs as the smartest ones in the farm. There are many more things that I could mention, but I want to leave the comparison there and focus on the last point that I mentioned, rewriting history. At the beginning of the story, the animals write down seven commandments on the barn's wall. Oh yeah, right, because the pigs learn how to read and write uh, magically, and they try to teach the other animals, but only the horses learn one or three letters, and the other animals, like the chickens and the sheep, they didn't understand anything. So, Napoleon would take this to his own advantage. For example, one of the commandments was, no animal shall sleep in a bed. So, it was surprising for the other animals in the farm when the pigs moved into the human house and began to sleep in beds. So, they went to the barn's wall to see the seven commandments, and they saw one that said, no animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets. They didn't remember anything about sheets on the original commandments, but right then, Squealer came by to assure them that no, 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 that was the original. It always mentioned sheets. So the pigs on the human house, they weren't doing anything bad because they weren't sleeping in beds with sheets. Similarly, no animal shall drink alcohol becomes no animal shall drink alcohol in excess, and no animal shall kill another animal becomes no animal shall kill another animal without cause. These teeny tiny additions were there just for the benefit of the pigs, the ruling class. The last commandment was all animals are equal. But little by little, we notice in the story that this also changes, especially when the pigs move into the human house. And not only that, but Napoleon, the leader of the pigs, gets his own room. Furthermore, he would eat alone and was rarely seen in public, and also his birthday became a national holiday. Or should I say a farm holiday? These are signs of a phenomenon called cult of personality, fundamental in any dictatorship. Cult of personality or cult of a leader is a term used when a regime or an individual uses mass media, propaganda, spectacles, and demonstrations to create an idolized and heroic vision of the leader. This leader is often seen as a father figure, or sometimes in more extreme cases, even a godlike figure, and is so wise and benevolent that his will shall not be questioned. 
The use of propaganda, the army, and state education is key in creating and maintaining this cult of personality. Animal Farm has a great depiction of totalitarianism and cult of personality, which we can see since the early chapters. Since the beginning, we know that Napoleon doesn't have the farm's interests at heart, but rather his own interests. And it's so easy to see in the book, and yet we fail in reality. This is why I think this book should be read at school. Children, and also adults, should learn how to recognize these traits of a oppressive totalitarian regime to protect ourselves from ending up like the book ends. It's an easy to read book about 100 pages and also it has animals that talk and animals that can read and write magically. We should all learn from this book and try to avoid that dangerous ending. The animals look up to the barn's wall and see only one commandment left. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been Ernesto Rogal. Be sure to check my other videos if you want to learn more about history. You can like, subscribe, and all those stuff. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao.